European Generation 6 fighter, the battle for the European sky. In September of this year, the world press was full of headlines, the essence of which is that the European fighter of the sixth generation, Future Combat Air System, abbreviated FCAS, has problems again. We should say at once that for us it was expected. In this video, we'll talk about the Franco-German project of the sixth generation fighter FCAS and why the problems of its developers were expected of us. We'll reveal to our viewers the hundreds of billions of dollars worth of intrigue. For people interested in aviation and military aviation in particular, it's no longer a secret that there are now at least six projects for the creation of sixth generation fighters. And if everything is clear with the projects of Russia and China, behind them are independent and militarily powerful states, which are simply obliged to have such weapons and their own. But why three projects in NATO countries at once? The American project, Next Generation Air Dominance, the British project, Tempest, and the French-German project, FCAS. Plus a similar project by the closest US ally in the East Asian region, Japan, called the FX. After all, NATO countries in Japan currently have only one fifth generation fighter, the F-35. One for all, and that suits everyone. Why spend gigantic sums creating four similar aircraft, dispersing material and human resources? What happened? In our opinion, the situation with the development of a sixth generation fighter clearly demonstrates the current situation in the world, which can be succinctly described by one phrase, every man for himself. And considering the amount of money at stake, one can easily predict that sworn allies will do anything to harm each other's projects so that their aircraft would prevail in the sky. Nothing personal, just business. And you know, we were not surprised when the first failures appeared in the Franco-German project FCAS. Why? Because from the point of view of the USA, France and Germany are the most unreliable allies, breaking through from the hegemony of Big Brother from across the ocean. But before we talk about the problems in this project, let's briefly talk about what the future combat air system is all about. The very first decision to develop a European sixth generation aircraft was made by Chancellor Merkel and President Macron in the summer of 2017. Since then, Germany and France have repeatedly emphasized their commitment to this European endeavor, which is considered an important, if not the most important, tool of an integrated European defense policy. In parallel, Airbus and Dassault Aviation, in their role as Germany and France's national industrial companies, respectively, have agreed on a large-scale transnational industrial collaboration to co-lead this ambitious project, with Dassault Aviation leading the development of the next-generation fighter jet and Airbus Defense and Space acting as a major partner. Spain joined the project on February 15, 2019. It'll be represented by Indra. And already on June 17, 2019, at the air show in La Bourget was shown a mock-up of this European fighter, very similar to the YF-23, a prototype of the fifth-generation fighter from Northrop and McDonnell Douglas. Then, as you know, the YF-22, which later became the legendary F-22-1. But back to the FCAS. Like all Generation 6 fighters, it's being developed in two options, a pilot and an unmanned version. At the same time, again, like all similar machines under development, it'll not even be a fighter but a symbiosis of the sixth generation combat aircraft with the so-called remotely piloted carriers, or reconnaissance strike UAVs, acting as multipliers of combat power. In addition, the presence of many different sensors to detect enemy weapons on the ground and in the sky, the information from which will be processed by artificial intelligence, as well as modern communication systems, which will be equipped with FCAS, will allow him to combine all the ground and air combat units of the European armies. According to the developers, it'll be able to respond quickly to threats and predict invasion risks at the stage of their occurrence. Instant reaction with different levels of retaliation or suppression of enemy actions, according to the developers, will nullify the effectiveness of most advanced developments of neighboring countries. Thus, France, Germany, and Spain will create a powerful air defense shield across the European continent. The first flight of this Franco-German Spanish superfighter is scheduled for 2027, and commissioning is scheduled for 2040. It should replace the current French Rafale, German Typhoon, and Spanish EF-18 Hornet, and will be operated jointly with the American F-35 until 2060, 
i.e. until the date of decommissioning of the American aircraft. And after that, as it's clear, the European sky will be guarded exclusively by European planes. And this means that the money for the construction of these planes will also remain in Europe. Plus, independence from the U.S. on this critical issue. Does the U.S. agree with this Franco-German-Spanish plan? Apparently not. And as a consequence of this, no, the FCAS project has begun to have problems. In 2021, the first problem arose. France said that the German defense industry, through participation in the fighter aircraft program, could gain access to French technology and use it for their projects. The Germans, of course, denied it. A high-ranking French source said at the time that it would be much easier for us to work with Britain because we share the same military culture. The British Tempest project was meant. Again, we were not at all surprised that the British, the most important strategic ally of the United States, were involved. But then the differences were overcome. But by September 2022, a new problem has arisen. Germany and France could not agree on who should play what role. Two of the three prime contractors, Airbus and Dassault, have not reached an agreement to start Phase 1B, the R&D-related phase that will lead to a prototype fighter jet by 2027, said Dassault CEO Eric Trapier. This time, the Germans are not happy. In their view, Dassault is taking on too much work and therefore too much money compared to Airbus. In November this year, the parties finally managed to reach an agreement. A source in the French government confirmed that industries that had recently been considered the main stumbling block to an agreement had agreed to move on to the next phase of the military aircraft project. But solving such problems is objectively slowing down the project. And now the same Eric Trappier says that the adoption of the jet aircraft in 2040 is unlikely to be possible. According to him, 2050 will be more realistic. A couple more of these problems in the timeline will move up another 10 years. That is until 2060. And what is 2060? That's right, as we said above, that's when the American F-35s will be decommissioned. And what will replace them if there's no European fighter? That's right, a sixth generation American fighter. And problems will arise at FCAS. Do not even doubt, at least on a purely technical level, as many experts point out, Russia has GLONASS, the United States has GPS, while Europeans do not have their global space system. And it's difficult to implement such a project without it. It's also necessary to have their own aircraft with long-range radar detection systems. The Europeans also have difficulties with them. Under such conditions, it'll be difficult to create a truly effective sixth-generation aviation system. One high-ranking source in the French government said, the Americans look at these efforts of European partners in cold blood and still twist their arms, forcing them to buy F-35 fighters. If projects FCAS and Tempest really begin to show success, no doubt Washington will try to prevent the introduction of the newest generation of European planes on the market. It's already been reported that Berlin is again considering buying American F-35 fighter jets as it decommissions its aging tornado fleet. And Chancellor Olaf Scholz recently announced German plans to invest 100 billion euros in its defense. On this occasion, Trappier said he was convinced that Germany would choose the F-35 as it had wanted previously. He said the U.S. is pressuring the Germans to use the F-35 for their nuclear mission, even as Berlin pays lip service to buying European. We'll see from our number one partner, which is Germany, what the first decision they'll make after investing 100 billion euros is whether they will sign the FCAS contract or buy the F-35, he said. In the meantime, both Paris and Berlin say the first flight of the FCAS prototype should take place in 2026. Well, we'll see what'll win, the European solidarity or intrigues of Americans and Englishmen. Frankly speaking, I hope justice wins. If you enjoyed the video, give us thumbs up. It'd be the best award for us and would give us a chance to see our work to as many people as possible. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel not to miss new interesting videos about modern weapons and the intrigues that accompany them.